Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. And you know what? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just turn the sound down on my other computer. I'm in stereo. There you go. Turn the sound down. Oh, this is a crazy world, isn't it? We're living in a crazy, crazy world. And uh, all this thing, all this, uh, trying to keep up with all the mad things that are going on in the world. And in the background is all this about Kate Middleton, the royal family. And <laughs> my son just said to me, I thought you didn't care about the royal family. <laughs> well, well, no, I don't really. But you know what? This shit show just carries on and on, doesn't it? What is going on? And the more that comes out and now things, uh, people are looking back. Do you know what? I think every photo of the royal family is going to be scrutinised now. Which photos are real? Turns out they're even photos of the Queen, the real Queen, are photoshopped. Some of them are photoshopped. It's just like in the end, we're never going to, we're just, we can't trust anything. And the more that I've looked back into, uh, I was going to say this case, it's not a case really, but it feels like a bloody case. Um, I've remembered uh, a lot of things that happened years ago and how strange they were, you know, apart from Diana and the death of Diana, that a lot of people still think to this day there was something suspicious about it there's so many things isn't there and do we even know the truth of anything anyway so um where do i start with this where do i start you know all the obviously the the basic thing that's happened is since christmas kate middleton depending on whether you believe it or not, has not been seen in public, except in very sort of mysterious photos of, is it her, was it her, wasn't it her, looking miserable, Prince William looking miserable, everybody looking miserable, Photoshop photos. And now we're supposed to believe that she popped out to the farm shop uh, to buy a loaf of bread and a video was taken of her at the farm shop which, um, you know, we're supposed to believe that. And it was only, I don't know, a couple of days ago, they were saying that she was actually staying at her mum's. Now suddenly she's back with Prince William again and they popped out for a loaf of bread to the farm shop, you know, like royal families do, but not with the kids. You know, even though Prince William has been juggling the kids and everything while Kate has not been appearing in public, they seem to manage to pop out without the kids to the local farm shop and buy some groceries, um, just like royal families do. Oh, is your head hurting yet? Well, it will hurt by the end of this video. Anyway, so let me just say hello to everybody. Selena. Hi, Selena. Hi, Chumba. Hi, Alana. Hi, David. <laughs> oh, I'm glad everything's still okay with Mrs. David. Hi, Julie. Hi, Mello. Hi Rio. Hi Amanda Jane. Oh, too many lies, Selena. It's just like you just think in the end. I, honestly, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I know that you know they're living a life removed from everybody i've always known that but it's just something weird about what maybe they're getting caught out now because of technology and things like that they can't get away with what they would have done years ago i mean years ago people would have just accepted anything they said uh hi katrina 
Uh, Selena, I haven't read John Morgan's book on Diana, but it wouldn't. I wouldn't have to read that to get angry. I've been angry about Diana for years. Hi, Sky. Yeah, very thin. She's very thin, bless. Oh, no, Alana, they had no security. They were at the local farm shop buying groceries like royal families do with no kids, no security. You know, of course. Oh, dear me. Yes, apparently the uh, farm shop footage, you can see Christmas decorations in the back. We're going to look at it anyway, of course. Hi, Simon. Someone said hello to Simon. I didn't see Simon coming in, but someone said hello, Simon, so I presume he's there. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's have a look at this footage from the farm shop of all places. Right, hang on. I need to put some windows down because I've been looking at other things. Is this it? Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. You tell me what you think. Do you know, I'm not even going to say anything. I don't think I actually need to lead anybody on this. People are just going to say what they see. Say what you see. It's like, uh, what's that approach? Say what you see. Say what you see. Okay, so this was in the sun. There you go. This is supposed to be Kate. Does it even look like Kate? You tell me, is that Kate? Great to see you, Kate. Great to see Kate. Princess Kate, seen on video for the first time since surgery, looking happy and relaxed on a shopping trip with William. So despite appearing healthy though, the princess remains under medical guidance to keep off work until next month. That doesn't even look like her to me, but okay, let's presume that it is her. Let's presume that it is her. So the Princess of Wales smiled and looked relaxed and happy on a shopping trip with devoted hubby, William. I hate that word, hubby. I hate it. But anyway, devoted hubby, William. So Kate, 42, dressed down in a hoodie and leggings carried her own shopping she carried her own shopping Ooh, even though she's just had abdominal surgery that supposedly has made her so ill but she carried her own shopping as she strolled through the car park at a farm shop now i don't know about you but if you've ever bought i don't know what they bought there but if you've ever bought vegetables, like if I go to my local market and you buy vegetables and stuff like that, they're bloody heavy, heavy. And, uh, you know, I have one of those, uh, my son calls them diff bags, one of those trolleys, you know, that goes on um, wheels um, that you put your veg in and stuff because it's hard to carry veg in that around, potatoes, onions, all those things that you would buy at the market, veg that you would buy at the market, they're way heavy. I wouldn't carry, I haven't had abdominal surgery and I wouldn't be carrying heavy bags around, that's for sure. Anyway, she did. She carried her own shopping as she strolled through the car park at the farm shop. There is no way that that is Kate. Somebody tell me, does that look like Kate? Does it? And then there's supposedly Christmas decorations up in the background here. Now, they may be left up from Christmas, to be fair. You know, there are definitely Christmas decorations up. They may, you know, they may be left up from Christmas. Just weird. It's weird that they're even trying to prove it's Kate when it, well, to me, it doesn't look like Kate. So Nelson Silva, who is 40, of course, that's important to know he's 40 for some unknown reason, uh, was shopping for steak at the farm shop and he spotted 
Kate and William in the bread aisle. Oh, God, it's like a parody, isn't it? Oh, it's like a little Britain sketch or something. So, Nelson Silver, shopping for steak at the farm shop, he spotted Kate and William in the bread aisle. Of course he did. And there they are. I mean, that looks a little bit like William there, I suppose. That This picture looks a bit more like Kate than that one does. <laughs> I just don't see. Uh, but this looks nothing like her. All the pictures look different. Oh, Royal Farms. This is Royal Farms breakfast. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Other shoppers seemed unfazed by the royal's appearance at the store. That's because it wasn't the royal's. That's probably why. And then this one looks a little bit like, a, is this guy a security guy? He's been on a couple of the photos. Look, he's carrying some bags there, whoever he is. Hang on. But he's not on this picture. what so this guy who's on this picture but he's not on this picture and is it just me or william's jeans look lighter there than they do on this picture uh oh god it's crackers and look there's different uh, maybe that's a different position but there's different people sitting there than there is there is it because they've moved past oh i don't know honestly my head's just gone with all this so kate laughed as she chatted with william on the walk outside the shop and there's i think the real kate so this was in December last year. So, of course, this was the last time that she was, you know, properly photographed, you know, by the media. Why don't they let the media photograph them if they're supposedly there's nothing to, you know, nothing, nothing to see here. Move on, move on, nothing to see here, but we won't let you take a picture. The only pictures that are coming out are pictures from people at farm shops or photoshop pictures that kate has released now when was this oh william and kate are said to be devastated by speculation over kate's health well then why don't they just you know why don't she just make a video saying she's okay a short video Lay off Kate. Lay off Kate. Stop bullying over the edited pic. So we're all bullying because we query this picture of a like Mr. Tickle with the long arms. We're bullying. We are. So footage emerged just hours after the sun exclusively revealed that Kate had spent Saturday shopping in Windsor and Sunday morning watching her children play sport. It comes amid weeks of vile bullying. I think vile and bullying. I think they mean vile bullying online behaviour where wild conspiracy theories have spread unchecked. They've spread these theories themselves. Some even refused to believe our front page yesterday despite Wills and Kate having been spotted by members of the public. The Sun last week called on the world to lay off Kate after she was harshly criticised for editing her Mother's Day family photo. Well, I don't think she was harshly criticised because I don't actually think it was even her anyway. What is this about? What is this about? Oh, it's the madness of social media. That's what it's about, apparently. It's the madness of social media. We have chosen to both report her appearance in yesterday's paper and show the footage today in a bid to bring to an end what the palace has called 
the madness of social media. Or well, the palace has called it that. So nothing, yeah, they never said anything about Meghan and Harry, and that wasn't the madness of social media. That was, you know, because Meghan's a bitch and Harry's a twit or whatever. But no, this is the madness of social media. And despite appearing fit and healthy, the princess remains under medical guidance to keep off work until next month. But she can carry her, her bags of veg around the local garden shop. She can do that. But she's got to keep off work, work, which basically means appearing in public, until next month. And no date has been given yet for a return for public duty after her abdominal surgery more than eight weeks ago. And it's understood she will return to work when she is good and ready. Okay, now we've got a little video of her. Oh, and there's been another scandal, hasn't there, that apparently people have tried to look at her, um, her medical records. How dare they? I mean, you know, I agree with that. I don't think people should be able to look at uh, medical records, but for God's sake. Anyway, I'm going to play this video for you. I've just got to go and sort my dogs out at the moment. When I first saw the Princess Catherine and um, Prince William, I, I was just elevated with joy, I just thought at last, you know. Um, and then, and this is what is so awful about people making complaints and being spiteful and all these things. You know, you sort of look again and you look again and you work out were the, were the newspapers told to send somebody around to take a picture? I don't believe it, but it's a way of being incredibly cruel and building up the idea that Everything that Buckingham Palace would do would be crooked. They would have some sort of way of getting things across because, but because they're clumsy, they will make a mess of it. I don't believe it, but you have to be very careful. I looked at Catherine, I thought, should she be carrying a bag? Because she's only just got out of hospital. Surely if she had something um, done in her stomach, uh, it, you have to be very careful. And then I looked again and I thought, well, it looks very, very light. You know, perhaps she's just got um, a bag of something very light in there. I shouldn't be asking that to myself. I should just feel that at last she's out there walking, obviously smiling and happy with Prince William, her husband. We didn't think that he wasn't. Um, the right man. Um, I, I just think that this, the, the way people are is just horrendous, actually. And I think that it comes from... I don't know who this woman is, but she's probably, she's obviously some sort of royal correspondent or whatever. Uh, probably her whole life revolves around the royal family and, you know, she's probably a royal commentator or whatever or some relative and you know, just rubbish what she's saying. We don't want to know what the what Kate Kate's medical records are. We don't we we have not caused this Ferrari. The public have not caused it. The royal family themselves have caused the Ferrari by lying and issuing Photoshop photos. It's not, you know, blaming you know <coughs> the public for it or blaming social media for it is is disgusting i think and i'm going to look in a moment we're going to look how people get blamed for things to do with the royal family now it ends in tragedy sometimes maybe just a few sources who hate the royal family and who therefore particularly hate catherine because up till now everyone thought she's perfect no questions about her and um i think that then these things run the other thing is that the type of person who sends them and is keen on them is someone who you cannot discuss or you cannot change their mind. Whatever the topic, if they make up their mind what they want to say, no words, no explanations, no photographs, nothing will change them. This is absolute, excuse my French, but it's absolute bollocks what she's saying. People aren't confused, they're not suspicious. 
because of their bad mind they're suspicious because this is weird just plain weird what is going on it's never ever happened before you think of how uh, princess diana was in the public eye so much and everything that she went through you think of even megan and what she you know the the sort of nastiness that she's had to pull well she went to america to get away with it i don't blame her to be honest um now this is happening to kate and i don't think anyone's been nasty about kate who is being nasty even i'm not being nasty i'm worried about kate i'm a republican i don't even like the royal family and i seriously seriously are worried about kate and why they're going to these lengths to sort of try and pretend everything's okay when it seems pretty bloody obvious that everything's not okay so it's not a question that people hate kate or want you know uh, want something horrible to be happening to her people are, are worried and thinking why why is all these lem are all these lengths being gone to to prove that she's okay when clearly she is not okay but anyway that's the way i look at it and it is disgusting i think it's why really um things have to be done about it max to get rid of TikTok because people are oh. obsessed with it and <laughs> it's a sort of challenge to be oh yeah get rid of TikTok because TikTok, it's all TikTok's fault so it's all coming down to TikTok again what does she know about TikTok? I, did you see what, who is this stupid woman sorry it's why really um things have to be done about it max to get rid of TikTok because get rid of TikTok. it's not even been on it's not about TikTok. it's been on the media on the mainstream media what has it got to do with TikTok? you silly woman what are you talking about get rid of TikTok. let's get rid of TikTok then that'll make everything better won't it Get rid of TikTok. People are obsessed with it and it's a sort of challenge to be worse and more rude. How funny that they were at the Windsor Farm Shop. So obviously it's probably owned by them. Um, oh God. As if they would have to go to the Windsor Farm Shop to buy bread or buy anything. It's like also, even if it was true that it was them trying to give this impression that they just go to the shops to buy veg or bread bollocks there's no way that they go to the shop to buy bread you know they just don't do they come on more unpleasant um and really settle down to this because we can't have it that our royal family that is so respected around the world or most sensible people um will be attacked like this I'd love it if you get rid of all these idiots who don't think things through. Yeah, let's get rid of all these idiots who don't think things through. And just say whatever suits them and try and create um, anger, spitefulness and nastiness. Um, that's from my view. And I think that's probably what a lot of people, I hope it is anyway. But we've also... Yeah just cause spite and anger and you know not not anything to do with just wanting to know you know is she okay I've got to think of the power and effect it has on the royals um i think you can only take they can only take so much attack because we must remember that they are there to give um not to take there you go. The royal family's there to give, not to take. They don't take anything. No, they just give. They're just there for charity. It's all about charity. They're just there to give, not to take. Oh, come on. And they they are brilliant. The royal, the royal family is brilliant and they look um, after the country and the Commonwealth extremely well. They might not be 100% Perfect, but then I don't know. Any That's a very nice dress she's got on there. She suits green, just to say, uh, just total aside there. Um, but just, just what this woman is saying is crackers, just pure crackers, I'm afraid. Anybody who is, but they do their absolute best and they have 
millions of people who think they're wonderful. So we've got millions of people think they're wonderful. Good for them. But this is this is the what this is the the wicked witch to me. Camilla is the wicked witch. I won't be surprised if she's got a lot bit to do with all this. But anyway, I maybe I just want to blame Camilla for everything because I've never forgiven her uh, for the Princess Diana thing. But you know, seriously, in today's day and age, when you look at things like this, you've got like a ruling family, like it's. You know, this her scepter and all, Pierre, all, go, and then you've got um, Charlie Boy at Christmas saying, "Live a simple life." They don't live a simple life. They're trying to prove that they go to the garden shop to buy a loaf of bread every now and again. That that means that they're just like the rest of us. Please, oh please, I probably prefer that they even. You know, pretended they were different from everybody else and trying to pretend that they're not when clearly they are not. Got to stop that. We have to look after them. We have to respect them and show that we we really don't care about this spiteful and nastiness. It's come over in so many areas of, of life now, but we have to do something about it. How you do it, I don't know, because a lot of them who send uh, emails and um X's and TikTokies and all those sort of things. Um, they don't use X's and TikTokies and all those kind of things. Who is this woman? My God, is this? Is she? Uh, is she speaking on this? And is this going out all over the world and making think that people think this is what British people really are like? Like this woman, you know, she looks like uh, she's just come out. Of, she's like Mrs. Bouquet, isn't she? You know. It's just like TikTokies. Oh, stop those wretched TikTokies from spoiling our British society. Use a real name. You can't identify where they are. So that needs to be changed too, so that anybody who uses these things should have a name which is um, put down and uh, can be looked up. And you can see where they are. We don't know if anybody is from England, from America, from Australia, from anywhere it could. Now, I agree with her up to a point there. I do think that people should be transparent in their usernames and things like that. People shouldn't, personally, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you should be. But I think they probably, can they trace people back if they want to? If they wanted to trace someone back on a tiktok -y account? Would they be able to do it even though it's not, um, you know, uh, would they be able to trace back who they are? I don't know. But at the end of the day, in that, in a sort of way, she's right like that. But the, these TikTokies, oh, God, it just fascinates me how they're obsessed with TikTok. And it's only it's only because it's Chinese. Would be, And we have to work that out so that it's down there. If you've got a passport you've got, or a K, you've got to have some sort of passport to use these hideous means of hurting people and indeed hideous means of hurting people i just i don't i i, I understand what she's sometimes these uh tiktokies do hurt people i don't think they're trying to hurt kate i think the thing is they're wondering if she's okay and what's happened to her and is she okay is it hate that's going out there for kate i don't think it is even from me a royalist uh, sorry a republican I don't hate Kate. I'm not trying to. I don't think there's people out there saying they hate Kate and it's hate that's going out there. I think it's concern and also, uh, you know, not feeling like people are being told the truth about things. I don't think it's about hating Kate, is it? All this interest. Indeed, um, not just the royal family, but um, all of us who, who admire them. I've never seen anything like this before Isn't this it? pure nastiness i mean you have she's never seen anything like this before it's pure nastiness people who don't like the monarchy and they wish we didn't they didn't have it uh but that's been moderate they've given their view they're entitled to their view but actually when it's really really nasty um i i think it's vile why do people want to be so vile 
uh, people are not being vile you silly woman um i do think that a lot of this footage that they're showing along with this video this video they're quite it's quite old footage isn't it it's been a long time since we've seen kate looking as happy as that as vibrant as that so i do think um you know this is what people want to see again they want to see that she's okay well if they don't like the royal family well don't read about them don't look at them step back get on with your own life but there's something in so many people's mind and thought now that there's pouring of evil words evil and things that they want to do uh, I mean, this was at Christmas. I'm pretty certain this was at Christmas because she's got that coat on. Uh, but I don't know. But of course, Charlie Boy's not very well. So it could be to take the attention off the fact that he is not very well at all. So everybody's talking about Kate and not talking about Charles. Um, but even Charles has been, you know, releasing photos and things like that. Nobody's come up and said, oh, these photos from Charles are photoshopped. Is it to take the attention off the fact that Charles is actually really, really ill? Um, or is it just to grab attention, uh, you know, because... <laughs> is it to grab attention in general? Or is there really something seriously wrong? Because ever since this, if this is from the Christmas, I think this is from the Christmas uh photos that when they attended church <laughs> sorry i'm just laughing at myself here i'm not laughing at them i'm laughing at myself i can't believe i'm actually discussing uh what the royal family are doing at the church service because i'm the least person that's interested in it normal it normally so this is it they've made me interested in it i'm not interested in it you know my normal life carries on uh regardless of the royal family they're not interested in me and i'm not interested in them they don't lose sleep over me and i don't lose sleep over them but they have created this interest by the weird things that they've done and the fact is they are the british royal family you know um, uh, like it or not that's what they are and so they are of interest across the world I mean, it is absolutely extraordinary. They, they've got no manners. They've got no understanding that other people might have a different view. Not interested. They want to kill everything off. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, woman, whoever you are. I don't even know your name. I don't even want to know your name. But people don't want to kill everything off. And uh, she's saying they've got no interest in what anyone else has to say. But I would say... It's her, really, who has no interest in what anyone else has to say. And here we go. We've got the royal family of the future right here. We've got the Prince Andrew of the future and the Prince William of the future. What is this about? I mean, they are a family. They're a family, a normal family. They're the ones who put themselves above everybody else. As I say, Charles telling everyone to lead a simple life. And when he had his coronation, he sat on a golden throne, travelled in a golden coach, sat there with a bloody great big crown on his head and holding a great big golden orb and then turns around, tells us all to lead um, a simple life. You know, is it just me or can people not see the irony in that? Um, to please them. But that's nonsense because we have to live as a society, and we have to live with people with different views. But actually to attack our royal family, who do so much, um, is just poisonous. It's poisonous. They do so much. Oh, fancy attacking our royal family, you silly, prissy woman. My immediate reaction was um, absolute delight. Right, so here's the video now. So you tell me, does that look like gay? Does it? Does it, though? Because, um, funnily enough, I've been saying for some time that I thought it would be nice to have a photograph of, of Catherine with the children in the garden. Well, as we know, that didn't work. And then I thought, well, the next solution, surely, is to have her moving about. <laughs> oh, God. So he's just said, well, I thought the, be the best solution would be to have a photo with Kate in the garden with the children 
and that didn't work so now i thought oh well the best solution would be to have a photo of kate moving about so you know obviously this is what they're all thinking about at kensington palace uh oh what's the best thing oh show kate moving about show her carrying a bag why didn't they just show kate giving her you know saying something like a normal person oh i'm fine but thanks for your concern you don't have to worry about me i'm absolutely fine why didn't they just do that you know like a normal thing that people would do if you were worried about your family member who was ill what would you expect them to do give you a they'd give you a facetime or something wouldn't they and say oh i'm fine honestly i'm fine don't worry about me i'm fine blah 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 not all this shite all this cryptic shite that everybody's supposed to swallow like uh even though it doesn't even look like her god it's all backfiring you see because it's not genuine and i thought it was um a lovely little clip uh i hope it was totally spontaneous and not sort of it was a lovely little clip because he's a royal historian so he's got no vested interest has he you know what would happen if the royal family collapsed tomorrow he wouldn't have a job for a start pre-ordained i suspect it was i mean there are always people with uh, iphones around who seize the moment um but you know there she was with william walking out of the farm shop uh they they go through a little gate there she was with william walking out of the farm shop it was such a lovely little clip Do, I, honestly i am speechless and you know it takes a lot to make me speechless but it's a lovely little clip there she was walking out the farm shop eight i think into into the park um not terribly far from adelaide cottage and uh you know i hope that'll put an end to a lot of these ridiculous conspiracy theory stories that are going going around you will never ever stop people coming up with ludicrous conspiracy theories i mean if you're a conspiracy theorist that is what you do and nothing will ever persuade anybody but um we are talking about sun readers who are on the whole bright and intelligent people and they should get the point that the what 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 he just said we're talking about sun readers who are on the whole bright and intelligent hang on hang on hold the phone as if he thinks that sun readers are bright and intelligent he doesn't think that do you know the the sun they actually oh, anyway i don't even want to go into that because it'll seem like i'm insulting sun readers and i'm not but the way he said that, do you think he reads the sun? No, no. That is what you do, and nothing will ever persuade anybody. But um, we are talking about sun readers who are on the whole bright and intelligent people, and they should get the point that the princess is obviously be getting better. Uh, we were told we won't get to see her or hear any news from her until Easter. That's still over uh, two weeks away. So... Um, I would think from what I saw on that footage, it's every possibility that she will appear for the Easter service. If she doesn't, so be it, but she might. Oh, if she doesn't, so be it. Oh, my God, this this is weird. Honestly, sorry. This is so weird, it is untrue. Right. Somebody disappears from view. We're not going to see her for three months. Um, well, that seems to be an opening for a conspiracy theory, doesn't it? Uh, you know, you can cook up anything, and if it isn't denied or there's no evidence to the contrary, well, it runs. And uh, I think the, the photograph, you know, was so well-intentioned. I mean, originally what they were going to do is just release a photograph of mother and children together to celebrate Mother's Day. Um, as you know, the purpose of the photograph was to reassure us that she was well. And unfortunately, it failed because, um, as it had been tampered with in a minor way, um, it could be could have been completely fake. It was tampered with in a minor way. Tampered with in a, a minor way. How does he know? So I can see that that gave them more mileage. Um, but I don't think they're going to get any mileage out of the footage that we've seen um, in the sun because... Um, there she is walking along with William. She's carrying something probably not very heavy in her hand. She's carrying something maybe not very heavy in her hand. 
Uh, why is she carrying anything? Why isn't this Twonk, who's supposed to be a husband who cares about her, why, why is he not carrying her bag for her? Why is she carrying it? Or is it just to prove that she's okay? It's not even her. I honestly don't think it's so. I'm going to show you some close-ups in a bit. And um, she's she's slim. She uh, looks cheerful, happy. I don't know what else you can ask for, frankly. You will also have people telling you that it's a, a look-alike or a, 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 some model that they brought in. I mean, they will go on forever, but I'm happy to trust that footage because I know the farm shop. I know where Adelaide Cottage is. Uh, it all fits, frankly. I think the point I would really like to make is that... Um, that Catherine is the greatest asset to the monarchy. We all love her. She's brilliant. She's got lovely children. She's got a lovely husband. They obviously get... Oh, we all love her. She's brilliant. She's got lovely children. She's got a lovely husband. We all love her, according to him. In other words, they've got nobody decent left in the monarchy. That's what he means. Because really, probably Kate is the only one they're hanging on to at the moment. Uh, and if she went, my God, who would be left? Nobody likes Camilla. Uh, you know, Charlie, really, not many people like. People of my generation don't like Prince Charles. I, I can't even call him the K-I-N-G word. After Diana, I think Charles is just... He was never going to, his reputation was never coming back. Maybe some people who don't really remember the Diana thing, uh, maybe, mm, and maybe they don't realise what a C-U-N-T Camilla is, you know, maybe because they don't remember back to that or they weren't around in those times. But any person who was around in those times and remembers that, and even royalists, do not like. Charles for that reason so there's a residue of respect isn't there for William uh, and of course for Harry well Harry's gone now nobody likes Harry anymore apparently because of Meghan and they think Meghan's corrupted him and this that and the other uh, so and William so there's only William and Kay here you know Andrew's a nonce uh, you know, there's uh, Princess Anne, I, I have a lot of respect for, to be fair. But, of course, she's a woman, so she's not the heir to the throne. So nobody cares about that. So people care about William because he's the heir to the throne. And they care about everything's on him and Kate now to sustain the royal th family, isn't it? So if that all goes wrong, and if it is going wrong, as people say, you know, that he's, you know been sort of seeing other women etc and she's pissed off about it if that is true uh the royal family's gone really isn't it what's going to happen to the royal family if it's not for them if it's not for kate and william what's left of the royal family really so they're very keen and it's not only the royal family themselves but it's all the hangers on people like him People like that silly woman earlier, their livelihoods rest on the royal family because if the royal family wasn't there, they wouldn't have, you know, they wouldn't be able to be a royal historian or, you know, all, all the bloody lackeys at the palace and this, that and the other. They're the ones that rely as well on the on royalty. You see, I'm sort of in a feeling now where I don't even like the word royalty, just the thought of it. And how ridiculous it all looks, you know, sort of uh, kowtowing to people for no reason except that they're the royal family. It's horrible. Anyway, and now this, of course, this scandal, this has been brought on by themselves. This Nobody has done this to them. The photoshopping incident was by the... Kensington Palace or Kate well I personally don't think Kate had anything to do with it I think it's more to do with the actual palace itself and I worry about Kate but anyway whatever the reason is I don't think the royal family is going to recover from this what is going to happen get on very well together they must both be under enormous stress at the moment because uh, he is of course as all princes of Wales are a heartbeat away from the throne. But in the light of the fact that his father is unwell, 
I imagine that this has become something which... Uh, just looking at Charlie here, um, it doesn't look healthy, does he? I said right from the word go when he became uh, the K-I-N-G, I can't even say the word, you know, just knew he's not going to be that for as long as his mum was the Queen. I feel like the Queen just hung on for so long because she knew... She knew that as soon as anything happened to her, everything was just going to go tits up, wasn't it? She knew that because she looked at the family and she's thinking, oh, God, this is all going to go wrong. I mean, look at him. He doesn't look healthy. His eyes are not, you know, the whites of his eyes are yellow, not white. You know, he just look and, and bearing in mind, he'll have been done up had makeup part, you know, to come onto this and to do this speech, whatever it is, it'll have been made to look as good as it's possible to make him. The lighting will be as good as it's possible to do. He'll have, he'll have makeup on, you know, so how he looks, you know, uh, when he first wakes up in the morning, because I know what I look like when I first wake up in the morning, but I don't look as bad as him, you know, so he is not well. You can see he's not well. He's never looked well. Uh, he's finally become what he's always wanted to be with his his darling Camilla at his side. Um, she's going to outlive him and she smokes about 40 a day, you know. So how that's happened, I'm not really quite sure. But just it doesn't feel like he's going to be K-I-N-G for very long. But what is going to happen if then William and Kate, if it all goes wrong for them? What is going to happen? The fact that his father is unwell, I imagine that this has become something which, you know, could it could happen. You know, he, he must be wondering whether it might happen rather sooner than later. I hope not, but that must be a thought. She has been unwell, so he's having to look after her. They've got three small children at school. They're... Oh, God, and they keep saying this, so she's been unwell, he's got to look after her. Do you really think that Prince William is looking after her? Come on, we've got three young children at school. So, yeah, you know, he's like, you know, struggling, sort of balancing, juggling everything. Oh, my God, he's got to clean the house. He's got to do the cooking. He's got to get the kids to school. He's got to do the shopping at the farm shop. He's got to do all that. It's a shame, isn't it? As if he is doing any of that. Of course he isn't. God. You know, he isn't doing it. He's not doing anything. He's just turning up for his engagements. That's all he's doing. He's not bloody cleaning the house. He's not cooking the kids' tea. He's not doing the school run in the morning. And, you know, he's not doing any of that. Of course he isn't. God, why did they make it sound as if he is? They're very hands-on parents. And I cannot imagine why anyone would wish to criticise either of them for whatever they do under their circumstances. And I think it says more about the people doing the criticising than what you might call the principals, William and Catherine. OK, so people are likening it to um, like what Putin would do. You know, if this was in any other country, if this was talking about Russia... Talking about any other country, everyone would be saying, oh, this is terrible, you know, what's happening in Russia or wherever. Uh, but, it's, you know, it seems OK if it's happening in Britain. OK. Now, did you see the photo that's on my uh, on the thumbnail for this that I just want to show you? So it turns out now that even photos uh, from the Queen... were photoshopped they've been photoshopping for ages honestly you know it may be sort of naive of me but it's really surprised me so apparently this photo is photoshopped i bet every single photo that's ever been released now by the royal uh, royal family so this again was released by kate or supposedly on the prince and princess of wales Kensington Royal. I don't think it's Kate who's releasing these pictures. I honestly do not. You know, do is she really controlling this um, this account, this ex account, 
or is is somebody else controlling it so today would have been her late majesty queen elizabeth's 97th birthday this photograph shown her with some of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren was taken at balmoral last summer but then it turns out it's photoshopped apparently you know i don't know in what way it's you know they're all just put together like that you know i'm sorry i just look at that photo and i just see load of entitled kids you know it's just like it's not a nice photo for me to look at that i don't get a nice feeling at all it just looks like awful and then knowing now that it's photoshopped makes it even more awful so this was released in april last year so this photo clicked at balmoral in august 2022 it says 2020 oh yeah because she said it was from the year before came under scrutiny after the princess confessed to editing a mother's day picture of herself and her three children and now this has been reviewed by Getty Images and Getty spokesman said Getty Images has reviewed the image in question and placed an editor's note on it stating that the image has been digitally enhanced at source. So in the photograph, standing at the back, oh, so this is Lady Lau... Oh, God, oh God. sorry, I, I can feel bad language slipping out here. Lady Louise Mountbatten Windsor and James Earl of Wessex here at the back. Oh, oh God, just, you know, oh, hello, sir. Hello, madam. Just let me tug my forelock for you. <clears throat> just drives me mad, all this. Drives me mad. In front of them are Lena Tyndall, the daughter of Mike and Zara Tyndall, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. Charlotte. You know what? Are we supposed to actually tug our fall up to these kids? Mia Tyndall is seated next to Queen Elizabeth on the right with baby Lucas Tyndall, while Savannah Phillips is seated to her left. There you go. These are your betters, all your future betters. These are all better than your children. This uh, uh, Prince George, he's already going around telling everyone at his school that he's going to be king one day and he's going to rule over them all. You know, the, this, is, this is the ruling family of the future. Sure. Anyway, the Telegraph highlighted a number of irregularities, including a digital replication of Mia Tyndall's hair and a vertical line where the tartan of the late queen's garment does not match let's have a look yeah yeah i mean i'm rubbish with their uh, photos and things like that i wouldn't you know i would just look at it i wouldn't notice it some people are better at noticing differences <sighs> i don't know the Queen looks photoshopped on that, to be honest. To me, that looks like the... that uh, Yeah, they all look photoshopped. She, poor Queenie, she looks like she's just been sort of planted there. So apparently, a dark shadow is visible behind Prince Louis' ear and a similar small black patch can be seen behind Prince George's shirt collar. Prince George's shirt collar, let's have a look. They're talking about this thing here. Yeah. So the, basically what's going on now is nobody's going to trust any photo that comes out uh, from the palace unless it's taken by, you know, mainstream media or taken by. Nobody's going to trust anything that comes out the palace now. Basically that's what's happened. So as if our reputation around the world wasn't bad enough, it's even worse now because now we're releasing photoshopped images, etc. So there you go. Uh, brilliant. Oh, and of course, the other thing, which some of you may know about or not know about, um, but 
the ru these rumours of Prince William having affairs. I mean, there was the the rumour about Jacintha Ardern, the New Zealand Prime Minister, or the ex New Zealand Prime Minister. Other people are saying, no, that's rubbish. It can't be. She's just married a partner and she's had a child. And then, but this this affair with Rose Hanbury, this is quite quite a significant rumour isn't it that has a lot of people say has got a lot of truth in it that someone who used to be Kate's friend Rose Hanbury uh, now apparently is having an affair with Prince William and I'm telling you that the Spanish news this affair is almost like just commonly accepted uh, that this is truth that he is having an affair with Rose Hanbury uh, and she's the marchioness of Cholmondley or whatever so you know they're all they've all got their silly titles um anyway so is it true or isn't it true who knows who knows now the last thing I want to look at is that is this was this where's the hang on so Piers Morgan, of course, has posted um, anyway, Piers Morgan, of course, is all for the royal family and this, that and the other. He posted on X or Twitter that this, these were genuine photos. And then people uh, on let's see if I can find it because I thought it was when you go into the comments and people have looked more closely at the photos, they look really clearly not like Kate, you know, but um, they might have been photoshopped at the end of the day. So the photos um, that people have put on saying, no, this is definitely not Kate, I suppose it's always possible that they might have been enhanced, is it? Let's see if I can find it. I probably won't be able to find it now because he does tweet quite a lot, Piers. Let's see. Ah, let's see. Okay, so Piers posted this. Great to see via the sun, Kate laughing and joking with William on their shopping trip. She's obviously recovering well. This should end a lot of the conspiracy theories. This looks absolutely nothing like Kate, does it, on this particular photo? And then, of course, people went on with answers, you know, with their tweets, replies. And... Um, you know, people saying that the years are different between them. Doesn't look like Kate. Everybody's saying it's this. If you look at that picture, but is that a genuine picture? Do you understand what I'm saying? In the end, I don't even know what I'm looking at. What is genuine? What isn't genuine? If you look at that picture, that looks nothing like Kate whatsoever. No, so people have gone and put all different um, pictures of her on there. And I think generally people are saying this is not Kate. Look at this one. I mean, you know, I'm sure you'll all talk about it in chat and decide what you think. Is it her or isn't it her? just getting out of control completely i mean that picture looks nothing like kate but that might have been enhanced you know because in the end people are going to go on and enhance themselves you know so what's the truth what's the truth i don't know so of course after all this i started looking into especially them saying that the queen the photo of the queen was photoshopped etc i 
I started looking into everything a little bit more like you do and something came up that I had forgotten about which I don't know if you remember or not but do you remember when Kate was in hospital um, after having uh, one of her children there was um There was a, a, like a prank done by two Australian disc jockeys. They rang up the hospital where Kate was staying and said, one of them said that they were, um, was it the Queen, I think, said that they were the Queen. And the other one said that they were Prince Charles phoning up to check on Kate to see how she was. Do we remember this? And they got through. They actually got through to the ward where Kate was, you know, because they were so convincing. And um, they got through and there was a big scandal about it. And then it turned out uh, that the poor nurse or receptionist that had let them through who was called Jacintha Saldana she was so mortified that she'd actually let them through that had actually you know fallen for this prank she killed herself now do you remember this uh I'm going to show you the actual a video of the DJs like talking and the it's just incredible and I'd forgotten about it so her name was Jacinta Saldana so this poor woman um Let's, let me show, I'm going to share with you the uh, the Wikipedia post on it. So the suicide of Jacinta Saldana. And here she is, poor Jacinta. And she died on the 7th of December 2012. She took her own life because she was an Indian nurse who worked at King Edward the seventh hospital in the city of Westminster and on the 7th of December 2012 she was found dead by suicide three days after falling for a prank phone call as part of a radio stunt and in this prank call the host of the Australian radio pro program Hot 30 Countdown which was broadcast on the Southern Cross or stereo owned station two-day FM in Sydney, called the hospital, impersonated the Queen and the then Prince of Wales inquiring about the health of Catherine. And she was a patient there at the time. Saldana fell for the hoax and transferred the call to the nurse looking after the Duchess. Was it a suicide? You know, you wonder, was she bumped off maybe? Anyway, her suicide led to public outrage, including in her home country against those responsible for perpetrating and broadcasting the prank. And despite numerous calls for legal action, no charges were ever laid to this poor woman. I mean, you know, she obviously, right, well, there are two things that have happened here, may have happened here. Either genuinely she was so upset that she felt so terrible that she'd let uh, you know fallen for this prank and you know insulted the royal family you think the royal family themselves would have gone to see her and said look we know it's not your fault don't be upset I mean maybe they did I don't know or maybe they never got a chance to but I just find it incredible that someone would do that because she would feel so bad or maybe she felt so bullied because all the media would have been trying to get an interview with her, etc. But she felt so bad about falling for this prank that she actually killed herself. 
I just, it's just awful, isn't it? Awful, disgusting. What they, that she would feel so bad about it, you know, that because the royal family are, you know, so, uh, do you know what I mean? It's like if, if somebody phoned up uh, impersonating my family, like she wouldn't have uh, killed herself. But, you know, like she felt so bad about it because the royal family is so like some sort of mystical thing you know I, I just i just think the poor woman you know it was just like she was only 46 years old 46 when she did this why did she feel so terrible about it um that she felt that she had to do that so she was staying in nurses quarters for the sake of convenience while her family she had a 16 year old son and a 14 year old daughter who lived in bristol i don't see how you know and, and did or was she bumped off honest to god i won't be surprised if she was bumped off because so she had a 16 year old son and a 14 year old daughter and she just took her own life because you know, I'm not being funny, but it was hardly the crime of the century, was it? You know, they managed to get through, and you know, it wasn't like didn't cause any real problems. You know, anything drastic. Uh, and apparently, uh, they said that the family initially reported that she didn't have any history of mental illness or depression, but then later they revealed it was not her first attempt at suicide but that she'd attempted suicide on two previous occasions. But had she, though? Had she, though? Or is that just fit in with the story? Honestly, nothing would surprise me anymore with all these things. Nothing, nothing. So apparently uh, the guy phoned up and said, Hello there, could I please speak to Kate, my granddaughter? And she just transferred the call instantly to the Duchess's nurse who apparently spent two minutes speaking with Greg. Anyway, let's have a look at it. I think we've got the, well, we've got some. Let's have a look at what they had to say about it on the news at the time. Phone call that lasted no more than 30 seconds. They thought they would be hung up on immediately. But oh, what happened there? Sorry, it's buffering a little bit. DJ speaking out for the first time, full of remorse for that royal hoax gone tragically wrong. ABC Cecilia Vega is in Sydney, Australia with the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. You know, the DJs say this was supposed to be a simple, harmless prank. They say it was supposed to be a phone call that lasted no more than 30 seconds. They thought they would be hung up on immediately. But now we all know that is far from what happened. Personally, on <sighs> the two Australian DJs behind that now infamous phony phone call came out of hiding overnight, offering a tearful apology on Australia's Channel 9 TV to the family of the nurse who became the butt of a joke heard around the world. Shattered, gutted, heartbroken. Mel and myself are incredibly sorry for the situation and, 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 and what's happened. There's not a minute that goes by that we don't think about her family and what they must be going through. Well, I don't know about you, but they don't seem dead uh, genuine to me either, to be honest. It, but anyway, they're pro um, I don't know, maybe you Australians out there, you'll be able to let me know. Are they? Do you know these people? Are they still on the radio or... Are they still on news programs now? I don't really know. And the thought that we may have played a part in that is <sighs> garishing. Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Oh, yeah. I mean, it must have been mortifying for this poor woman, to be honest. Let, let's just go back to that again. I just want to look at them again talking because they seem really false, but she has got tears, the girl. But, of course, it's easy to put on false tears, but... Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Oh, yeah, just hold on. Now. Incredibly sorry for the situation and, 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 and what's happened. There's not a minute that goes... He doesn't look upset at all. At all. 
she looks upset just because she's got tears but are they you know fake tears is it the onion again is it the debbie davis school of crying by that we don't think about her family and what they must be going through and the thought that we may have played a part in that is <sighs> garishing oh hello there could i please speak to kate please my granddaughter oh yes yeah, just hold on now DJs Mel Gregg and Michael Christian say they never imagined they'd get through to the hospital where Kate Middleton was recovering from severe morning sickness. And they never could have predicted. See, when they came out there, out of the hospital, that is when they did look together. You never see Kate and William like this now where he puts his arm around her and it's easy between them and they look happy. This just doesn't happen anymore. And they never could have predicted what would follow, that days later, Jacintha Saldana, the nurse who patched their call through to Kate's room, would be found dead from an apparent suicide. We both found out about the same time, and I think it was... It's the worst phone call I've ever had in my life. The global... Oh, yeah, it is the Stephen Stern School of Crying or the Debbie Davis School of Crying. He's not, he, he actually looks like he's going to burst out laughing any minute, to be honest. Well, backlash has been fierce from online death threats to calls for prison. The DJ's radio station announced it is banning phony phone calls altogether and suspending advertising indefinitely. And the popular team is off the air, silenced indefinitely but with one final thing to say. I've wanted to just reach out to them and just give them a big hug and say sorry. But I hope they're okay, I really do. And the DJ said higher ups at their station made the final decision to air this call. Lawyers were also involved in that, but George, not once during this interview did the DJs express any reservations about airing their prank. Let's just listen again to that, I think, because uh, it is interesting. Let's Australian go. DJ speaking out for the first time, full of remorse for that royal hoax gone tragically wrong. ABC Cecilia Vega is in Sydney, Australia with the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. You know, the DJs say this was supposed to be a simple, harmless prank. They say it was supposed to be a phone call that lasted no more than 30 seconds. They thought they would be hung up on immediately. But now we all know that is far from what happened. Personally, I'm... <sighs> the two Australian DJs behind that now infamous phony phone call came out of hiding overnight, offering a tearful apology on Australia's channel absolutely fake as f-u-c-k isn't it channel 9 tv to the family of the nurse who became the butt of a joke heard around the world shattered gutted heartbroken Mel and myself are incredibly sorry for the situation and and and, and what's happened there's not a minute that goes by that we don't think about her family and what they must be going through and the thought that we may have played a part in that is <sighs> Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Oh, yes. Yeah. Just hold on now. DJs Mel Gregg and Michael Christian say they never imagined they'd get through to the hospital where Kate Middleton was recovering from severe morning sickness. And they never could have predicted what would follow, that days later Jacintha Saldana, the nurse who patched their call through to Kate's room, would be found dead from an apparent suicide. See, the other thing, actually, when you look at that, so apparently she was in hospital recovering from severe morning sickness. It's just strange, isn't it? But anyway, very strange. Yeah, so how, have, have any of you ladies out there been in hospital with uh, severe morning sickness? We both found out about the same time, and I think it was... worst phone call I've ever had in my life. The global backlash has been fierce from online death threats to calls for prison. The DJ's radio station announced it is banning phony phone calls altogether and suspending advertising indefinitely. And the popular team is off the air, silenced indefinitely, 
but with one final thing to say. I wanted to just reach out to them and just give them a big hug and say sorry. I hope they're okay, I really do. And the DJ said higher ups at their station made the final decision to air this call. Lawyers were also involved in that. But George, not once during this interview did the DJs express any reservations about airing their prank. Okay. So another thing, another video then I want to see is what the um what her Jacintha's employers had to say after this happened. So I think uh, the hospital had been supporting her through this very difficult time. This morning, Jacintha Saldana was found dead just a few blocks from the hospital. Scotland Yard called her death unexplained, but not suspicious. She was 46 years old, married with two children. In Australia, the DJs have been yanked off the air until further notice, while the radio station apologized and expressed deep shock. And tonight, the palace released a statement saying William and Kate are deeply saddened by the tragedy. Lama Hassad, ABC News, London. Let's have a look again. One of the hospital workers who was duped by Australian disc jockeys into believing the Queen of England was on the phone for Kate Middleton has been found dead under mysterious circumstances. And no less than Scotland Yard is on the case. ABC's Lama Hassan has the details. For a week, King Edward VII Hospital has been at the centre of a white-hot media glare. And one day after Duchess Kate checked out, tragedy. It is with deep sadness that I can confirm the tragic death of a member of our nursing staff, Jacintha Saldana. It was Saldana who answered the phone on Tuesday when two Australian DJs impersonating the Queen and Prince Charles asked to speak with Kate. Hello, good morning, King Edward VII, please. Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Oh, yes, just hold on. Um... Thank you. Saldana put them straight through to Kate's private nurse, who unwittingly divulged details about her medical condition. It became a global punchline. An Australian radio station has managed to trick the hospital. The whole world laughing at the Duke nurses, even Prince Charles making light of the situation. <laughs> the DJs boasting of their prank. We were expecting to be hung up on. We didn't even know what to say when we got through. Tonight, the hospital acknowledged the toll the prank took on the nurse who answered the phone. Jacintha was recently the victim of a hoax call to the hospital. The hospital had been supporting her through this very difficult time. This morning, Jacintha Saldana was found dead just a few blocks from the hospital. Scotland Yard called her death unexplained, but not suspicious. She was 46 years old, married with two children. In Australia, the DJs have been yanked off the air until further notice, while the radio station apologized and expressed deep shock. And tonight, the palace released a statement saying William and Kate are deeply saddened by the tragedy. Lama Hassad, ABC News, London. Yeah, so, you know, very sad, wasn't it? Very sad um, for Jacintha and the family. Sorry, let me put the camera back on. Yeah, so very sad. And I was just looking at um, so, yeah, some of the comments in the chat and everything. I oh, was saying about like spreading rumours how it would have been years ago. Imagine without internet, without social media, without all those things. You'd have to send you your rumour by pigeon post or whatever. That was Twitter in those days, wasn't it? Send your rumour by pigeon or send a runner, you know, uh, don't shoot the messenger. It's like how long it would have taken for these rumours to get round. Uh, just, but of course, nowadays it's boom. And that poor woman, to be fair, imagine how she felt because, especially if she had some history of depression already, that like they're saying, uh, knowing that you were literally all over the all over the world being talked about, and she wasn't 
um, a member of the royal family or, you know, famous in any way. She was just a, a nurse at the hospital. And then suddenly she'd just been made fun of everywhere and, and she'd probably felt that she was going to lose her job. She'd probably, you know, we, we've not heard that, but probably she had been told she was going to lose her job. You know, she'd probably been sacked already, but they won't say about that. Um, you know, so she just felt she had nothing. I mean, we, it's hard to get your head around it. Like I person, you know, if it was me in that circumstance, I'd be thinking, oh, well, you know, just one of those things sort of thing. I would, but people take different things seriously, don't they? And there might be something else that I would take seriously and find, you know, that would push me into, you know, deleting myself. But another person would say, oh, well, why do you, you know, that doesn't matter. Why? You know, because we all have different things, don't we, that we worry about or that we find really important or really dramatic. And obviously for her, it was the thought of losing her job. It was the shame of being... You know, because she could have dealt with it in a different way. She could have appeared on, she could have sold her story to the sun, couldn't she? You know, like, oh, you know, I was the one who felt that, you know, got a load of money off the newspapers or whatever. There's lots of different ways she could have dealt with, with it. But because of the type of person she was, she could not deal with it and she could not treat it as a joke and she took it seriously. I think the royal family could have intervened there, but maybe they just didn't get a chance to uh, because they could have, you know, spoken to her and said, look, please don't, you know, feel responsible about it. Or they could have said to the hospital, don't sack that woman, you know. she. Who knows what went on behind the scenes there? It could have turned out in a different way, couldn't it? It didn't have to turn out the way it did. So my dogs are about. Eh, eh. They're fighting over a dog chew. Hang on a minute, I've got a sort of mouth. Eh, eh. No, no. You're fighting over it. Where's it gone? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Riley. Where is it? Where's it gone? Where is it? I don't even know where it is, for God's sake. I don't know where it is. So they're fighting over a dog chew. The dogs are fighting over a dog chew, but I can't find it, so I can't help him. Yeah, so. So, that was something that I found. Obviously, I was looking, you know, at all these things about the photoshopping, etc., and I remembered that. When it came up, I thought, oh, God, yeah, I remember that. But I'd, I remember it, but I'd forgotten about it, if that makes sense. Uh, anyway, poor Jacintha. I know poor family, you know, because so it just seems strange that she had two teenagers, you know, that they would be, that she would do that. But anyway... Okay, now... Before we finish, I'm just going to see if there is any news about Samantha Murphy or Riley, the other cases that we're looking at. My voice is going, I can feel it. Uh, no, it's only really about the end of the search actually i can show you this because i haven't showed you this before um i don't think we've seen this video together or maybe we did but we'll watch it again new intelligence has led police searching for Samantha Murphy to a new patch of bushland near Ballarat. Dozens of specialist officers spent most... Now, just to say, this was news from yesterday, and, of course, they did not find Samantha. Though it looks like they are going to be doing some more searches. So I just wanted to show you this because I haven't shown you this before. 
after the day searching thick scrub and mine shafts. But late today, the search was called off. Cassie Zervos has the latest. It's been almost two weeks since a man was arrested and charged with Samantha Murphy's murder, but new evidence has led officers back here to the Buninyong area. It's a suburb on the outskirts of Ballarat, about six kilometres south of where police last searched for Samantha's... Now, I do think it's interesting in this uh, video to... So sorry, we're going on to Samantha Murphy now. Um, for anyone who's coming in now, we, we've uh, you'll have to rewind for the Kate Middleton news. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting to see the area, isn't it, for us to get an idea of just how difficult these searches are. Um, but anyway, they did not turn up anything, just a bit of a spoiler there. But it's interesting to hear about it. Remains. And the search is focused on a bushland reserve a few hundred metres from houses. Today, police from the missing persons squad search and rescue. The dog squad, the mounted branch, police on dirt bikes and the air wing spent hours searching. So there were dogs there. So, you know, a lot of people have been sort of questioning, are they using dogs? And they are using dogs. So um, dogs are essential, really, aren't they, for these kind of searches, surely? Dogs are essential to use. For the mother of three, police have charged 22-year-old Patrick Stevenson with her murder. He's the son of former AFL player Oren Stevenson. We know that Patrick was out on a bender the night before Samantha disappeared while on a morning run on February 4. Seven News understands that Patrick Stevenson has not cooperated with investigators since his arrest. So whatever information led them to Buninyong is not believed to have come from the suspected killer. Police spent almost eight hours today searching for the mother of three. Sadly, she wasn't found. There will be searches in the coming weeks as detectives vow they will not be giving up. <laughs> Uh, let's have a let's put in Riley and see if anything's coming up about um, not my Riley, but of course Riley Strain. He's the other case that we're watching, and as far as I know, they haven't found him yet. No, let's have a look at a timeline. We've got a timeline here. Let's have a look at it. Stop it. Oh, God. The dogs are having a good bark. I'll tell you what it is. It's one of my stupid neighbours whistling his dogs. I swear he does it on purpose because he gets all the dogs in the neighbourhood uh, barking because he's whistling for his dog. We just have a little reminder about Rose. So these are the main cases that we've been following, haven't we? Um, Samantha Murphy, which obviously they've char the police have charged someone for a murder, but they're looking for a body. What's happened to Riley? Now the Madeline Soto case. I've got some interesting stuff to put into a video about poor little Maddie, uh, but I don't know if I'll get a chance to do it now for, well, maybe in the morning. Um, but let's just hear this about, this is just a summary about Riley, just to remind us of the cases that we're looking at at the moment. Oh, oh gosh, that 
That was awful, that when he fell over. I think this guy has been spiked. I honestly think this guy might have been spiked because uh, he just seems so out of it. And, you know, from what the bar said, you know, that um, they'd only served him with two waters and one alcoholic drink. Has someone spiked his drink? Could even be one of his friends. You know, lads, young lads, they do stupid things like that. They think it's funny. You know, so it may well, somebody may well have spiked this poor boy. When you look at this footage, because he seems, when he actually speaks to the policeman, he seems quite, um, have I shared this? I haven't shared it, have I? Have I? Maybe I haven't shared it. No, I haven't shared it. Oh, there you go. That's the first time tonight. <sighs> yeah, he... Um, let's go back to the beginning then. When he talks to the policeman, he doesn't seem that bad. But when you see the other footage, he is. There's new evidence in the mysterious disappearance of a college student who went missing 10 days ago during a fraternity trip to Nashville. Newly released body cam video shows him speaking with the police officer on the night he vanished. CBS's Errol Barnett has the new developments. New tonight, police in Nashville releasing this body cam video showing an officer's brief encounter with 22-year-old college student Riley Strain. How you doing, sir? I'm good, how are you? Good. It's just minutes after Strain had been kicked out of a downtown Nashville bar. Surveillance video from that night shows Strain stumbling and falling down. That was 10 days ago. He hasn't been seen since. Honestly, when I see that, I do think, I think he's been spiked. Honestly, I do. You know, how did he end up like that when apparently all he had were uh, two waters and one alcoholic drink? Well, in that bar, anyway. Let me just go back to that. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's just minutes after Strain had been kicked out of a downtown Nashville bar. Surveillance video from that night shows Strain stumbling and falling down. Ooh. That was 10 days ago. He hasn't been seen since. His parents desperate for answers. This is a very trying time. Um, emotional. It's a roller coaster. Over the weekend, another clue, a bank card found on the embankment of the Cumberland River, now the focus of a massive search. Strain, a senior at the University of Missouri, was in Nashville with several fraternity brothers visiting local bars. He was asked to leave. Uh, Ebo, it wouldn't matter if you put me on a technology course. Is this once I get tired or I'm into a live stream or that, I just, I just forget that's all it is. I can feel I'm getting tired now. But thank you. Please put me on a technology course. I'd like a video making course. This bar owned by country music singer Luke Bryan. The bar says it serves strain one drink and two waters. Luke Bryan posting on social media, this is scary, praying for his safe return. Friends say Strain told them he would head back to the group's hotel. He wasn't reported missing until the following afternoon. It's all of our hearts are out there and we're trying to find him. We're doing the best we can. See, that's quite strange that he wasn't reported missing till the following afternoon. But of course, you know, young boys, they don't, you know, he might have hooked up with a girl, he might have gone off with a girl somewhere. Uh, you know, he could have, I suppose. You know, maybe they didn't realise, uh, you know, when he didn't come back straight away. Maybe it took his friends a little while to realise that he wasn't coming back. It's horrible, isn't it? I think for his parents, it just must be so sad. Um, you know, and for we all understand that we've either been in that position ourselves, you know, where we've been out and maybe had a little bit too much to drink or, or a little bit too many sort of recreational substances. And, um, you know, been lucky to get home safely. Uh, and unfortunately, Riley did not get home safely. 
Now, Tennessee's Alcoholic Beverage Commission is investigating the possibility that strain may have been overserved there at Luke Bryan's bar. But Nora, we should be clear at this stage, police have said they do not yet suspect foul play. Carol Barnett, thank you. So they're still saying no foul play, but of course they said that with uh, Samantha Murphy, didn't they, in the beginning? So that doesn't mean anything. Uh, there may be no fa foul play. Okay, so there you go. So that's the latest about Kate Middleton and the, the royal family fiasco. And every time I think, oh, I'm not going to... Uh, say anything again about the royal family it's, you know something else comes up um and then yeah hopefully tonight now as we're coming into the morning time in australia aren't we so you never know if the police may be going off searching again they may find some trace of samantha murphy today every day we hope that they will um and riley we hope that riley strain you know Something will be found out sooner or later. Okay, so remember to live and love very wisely, very carefully. Don't go photoshopping. Don't go walking next to rivers. You know, <laughs> all this advice they can give you. Just, I would definitely say to anyone, because I think if you saw my community post today, uh not that far away from me a little bit far away from me to be honest you know a young person was found yesterday 15 year old jumped into the water with his friends into a river that happens in spain as well jumped into a river it's been very hot here the last couple of days so i presume that's why he and six friends all jumped into this river he got stuck in the mud they think in the bottom and he couldn't come back to the surface so please don't go no rivers are dangerous aren't they they're so dangerous but anyway <laughs> yeah and don't go to farm shops and carry your own uh, bread home or whatever she was supposed to be carrying nobody that is the weirdest thing of all for me nobody will ever convince me that Kate goes to farm shops and buys her own veg and her, her own uh, bread. Of course she doesn't. So, you know, if she did go there, it was just for a photo op. But personally, I don't believe it. But anyway. Okay, so I'll see you very soon in the next video. And until then, may your God go with you. Yes, bon voyage. The, I'm trying to, so in Spanish, you'd say buen viaje. Okay, adios.